So this was my first 3D render from 10 years ago. So everybody starts somewhere. This is where I started, guys, 10 years ago. And this was actually following a tutorial. Without a tutorial, I wouldn't have been able to do anything inside of Blender. Oh my gosh, it looks like a little pile of poop. When you blur your eyes and just look at it, it looks like a little turd. The, the tutorial is way better than what I came up with here. Big thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. The easy way to build a stunning looking website. So that's what I thought would be kind of fun today is to see if I can take this scene now and make it look a little bit better. Maybe kind of redeem myself 10 years later. Hopefully it's a lot better than it was back then. Fingers crossed. Jeez, the topology of the scene was so bad. I used two different meshes for the head. Probably because I messed up on the mouth, and so I just created like two meshes for the mouth here. I don't know. I don't know what I was doing, but um, yeah, I didn't know what I was doing. So those eyes are kind of like staring into my soul. A little demon eyes. <laughs> but basically, I'm not gonna lie. This was a fun project. I remember having a lot of fun doing this ten years ago, and that's why you should never be ashamed of your first artwork. It always started you somewhere. You have to start somewhere. And unless you're one of those guys that post an artwork like this and go hashtag my first project, those kind of guys, you know, that we all hate because they just look amazing right out of the box. And we're like, come on, nobody's, nobody's that good. Come on. So now for recreating the scene today, I didn't want to just go and try and create like a realistic cow in a field with some trees and flowers because that wasn't the objective that I was going for. I knew it wasn't looking like a realistic scene when I was creating and I thought it looked pretty good but I knew it didn't look realistic. It was going for like that clay sort of scene. So that's what I kind of want to recreate today. I want to fix the wrongs I did back in the day and make it actually look more like what it was intended to. So like a clay render inside of a nice nature scene. And I know Blender's come a long way in the last 10 years with its new render engines and stuff. I'm not too sure if I've come a long way or not, but uh, hey, that's what we're here to find out. So it should be a lot of fun for some of us anyways. So without further ado, let's just so to start off with this project, I just started off by creating a clay material. I subdivided the cube, added some smooth shading, and added in a fingerprints texture for some clay material. I connected this up to the roughness on my principled shader. As you can see, using those fingerprints right away kind of gives a nice clay material to our Blender render, and then using a color ramp to kind of tweak the roughness a little bit. And then I added in a bump node and connected it to the height of the bump, turned down the strength a bit, and you can see that we had some nice fingerprints on a sort of clay material. So then I just started working off of that cube Cube, mirroring it over to the left side, just kind of rounding it out a little bit and then insetting some faces for the nose of our cow. And you can see right off the bat, we have sort of a cute little pig nosy cow face and that looks, you know, kind of what I was going for. So then just duplicated that cube and started making some shapes for the body, sort of modeling it as I would if it was clay. But then I realized I don't know how to model with clay. And so I started silently panicking at this point that after 10 years of Blender experience, I was no better at the program. And as you can see, some of these results were like cow, chicken, nightmare material. So at this point, I was having a little bit of a midlife crisis, wondering if I chose the right career path. But after getting out of the way and putting some more work into it, I was back out getting a simple shape here. As you can see, I wanted to keep it sort of like a clay model. So I wanted the legs and stuff to be individual pieces, kind of connected to a clay thing, as it would be if you were making a little clay model. And that's kind of what I came up with here, something that wasn't entirely disturbing, and I thought it was kind of cute. And then also using a displacement modifier here, I was able to kind of give it a little bit more of an organic clay shape. Then I just added in some cute cartoon eyeballs, and then I duplicated the eyelid, cut it in half, gave it a nice blue color and some thickness, and then rotated it around the eyeball to kind of give it the eyelids and this kind of just made the cow a bit cuter putting those blue eyelids on it then just a little bit of an ear model super basic some horns up on top and shockingly we actually have something that's kind of cute so we're ready to move on to a mouth and this is where things went back to pot again because I realized that if I tried to model a mouth similar to as I did in the past it's still it looks like a monkey cow <laughs> why can't everything be easy Easy, like this video is sponsored at Squarespace. With Squarespace, you can create stunning looking websites in no time at all by using their easy to customize templates to create really great looking websites. Plus, you can grow your website really fast using their powerful analytic tools, social media sharing, and email campaigns. It's like easy had a child with easy, and now it's Squarespace. <laughs> Plus, if you don't believe me, you can head over to squarespace.com and take advantage of their free trial to try it out for yourself, start playing around with things. And if you want to buy a website or domain, then you can use my coupon code CGGeek at checkout to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. So it's pretty much like the easiest thing ever. 
So this is where I did a little bit of research on what a good clay model looks like. And I was referencing some Shaun the Sheep reference artwork. And this is where I kind of decided that I should make the mouth a separate piece. So I made just this little jaw piece here with some teeth on it, slapped it on the bottom of that nose, and I decided that this looked kind of cute. So now that we had a little cow model that wasn't going to give children nightmares, I decided to start moving on to the environment. And for this, I figured I could do better than a green plane. So I went ahead and added in a new plane to my scene, kind of shaped it again using proportional editing, and added in a basic moss texture to the ground here from textures.com. And then I went ahead and threw on the roughness and normal maps. And as you can see, we have a terrain that is something to work off of. So then it was on to adding some trees. And as you guys know, with my one minute tutorial, creating trees is super easy. So I went ahead and created some of these low poly trees, threw some branches on them and stuck them in my scene. As you can see here, I just played around with them a little bit until I found a composition, an angle for the different trees in the scene that I thought kind of complemented the composition, I guess. That's just the fancy word for experimenting until something looked okay. Then for some rocks across the scene, you guys know how easy it is to create rocks with that one minute tutorial that I did as well. I just added in a simple stone, use the same Veroni displacement texture, and then was able to just sort of modify my cube here and get a nice rock shape wherever I wanted it. Then I kind of wanted to create a nice brick wall behind our clay modeled cow to kind of separate it from the background a little bit. And this was actually really easy using the same rock technique. I just made some flat rocks out of it, duplicated it, changed the cube shape a little bit and was able to just stack them up really easy. And once you create a little section of rock wall, as you can see here, I was able to just duplicate it over and then fill in the holes by using some smaller rocks to patch it up. And it was really easy to just shape the rocks however I wanted and create a nice little background rock wall, as you can see here. And that did work well as a nice sort of out of focus wall behind our subject, separating it from the background. So then I wanted to add some realistic nature underneath the cow. So I started with my nature asset pack. I have some tutorials on how to create these assets. If you guys are interested in more detail and modified the grass assets I have there by using proportional editing to kind of pull the grass into the different shapes that I wanted for the scene. I started with some long tall grass and then I used a weight paint mode to choose just the areas like around the trees, rocks and walls that I want the longer grass to be located and then use that as a particle system. And as you can see, that actually worked pretty well. And then I just went on to creating some more variations of this grass for some lower sort of mowed down grass to put in the other areas. So here I made a variation of the daisy that I used in my nature scene, added that as another particle system to add some nice cute flowers. And these are kind of to match the flowers that I had in my original uh, scene. I don't know why I went with the color blue. Blue is kind of an uncommon flower color, but hey, you know, I was being uh, creative back in the day. So yeah, to create a realistic nature floor, it's just about layering more and more assets on top of each other. Using different particle systems and vertex groups to give them patchiness across the scene. Here I added some weeds and clover to different patches of the scene. I went ahead and added another one for some leaves here and there across the scene. And with a little cycles preview, you can see that that's looking really great already as a nice sort of nature floor. The entire scene is actually just lit with an HDR from HDR Haven. Back in my original scene, it was lit purely with a sun lamp. Today I just went with an HDR lighting because it's obviously a lot more better. But I also wanted to share this. In my experimenting with the grass, I actually came across an issue where I wasn't getting it to blend very well with the surface of the ground. And what I actually did to work this out was just add more assets, tweak the colors of the grass and the ground until I was getting the textures matching the grass more like I was looking for. And it just took a little bit of experimenting. So I think in one way that I've improved a lot is basically I just know that things can look better and it's just gonna take some time experimenting, trying different things until you get what you imagined it looking like instead of just settling with what it does look like. So then for those distant mountains, I just used the landscape generator to get some nice displaced ground. And then I just projected that farmland texture onto the plane and scaled it up to have a little bit more displacement in my scene. Another little step I did was just select some of the vertices on the individual patches of ground and add some height to them to kind of break up the different field slash forest in the scene. And uh, it was just a little subtle thing to maybe add a little bit of definition to the background. Super janky, but I knew it was gonna be out of focus as this is sort of a miniature scene. And I thought it looked pretty good back there. So then for a final touch, I wanted to add some atmosphere to the scene. It always looks better when you have some depth to your 3D renders. And there's a lot of different ways to do this. The best way is probably to use volumetrics like I did here by adding in a cube, scaling it up to the size of my scene, using a simple noise texture plugged into the density of a volume scatter node, as you can see here. And this just gives a nice sort of volumetric effect to your scene. Now there's other methods of doing this using like textures layered on top of each other that might render faster. But generally I think actually doing volumetrics is going to be the most realistic looking results in the end. And it's just gonna take a little bit longer to render. But we're not finished yet as a wise man once said, moths add realism to anything. That's right, we had to add moths to the scene to make Ian proud. So all I did was take a basic moth texture, imported it as a plane, used the jankiest method of using the knife tool to just cut out the moth in edit mode. As you can see here, 
deleted the faces on the outside, gave it a little bit of thickness, and then just positioned the wings using some proportional editing. And then I just used my volumetrics cube to emit these from the volume of the cube. This adds a nice little bit of realism to the scene as well as some depth when you use that depth of field on them and I thought it just looked really cool. And hopefully I made Ian Hubert proud in the process. Then I threw a little bit of grass in the cow's mouth and rendered the scene. This was my finished result here. And I think it's a little bit of an improvement over my first work. I'll let you guys be the judge. So hopefully after 10 years, this kind of writes the wrong that I did. I exercised the demons out of the scene and uh hopefully we have some better results like i said it's not wrong that you started off with a scene something like this and i'm actually very happy that i did that it was a ton of fun to create and if you guys want more videos like this definitely let me know because i have tons of really terrible artwork from back in the day that i could probably fix so if you guys want to see videos like that i will probably make more of them let me know with a like on the video and i will see you all in a future video guys see you later bye bye